that what they see with their eyes is what there is to see. Because they'll lack in the face of an explanation that portrays the bigger picture of what's happening. And they have. Know what's going down, but no one's saying shit what happened to the home of the brave. These motherfuckers, they control this now, and no one's talking about how they made us out of these slaves. And everybody's just walking around, not in the clouds, and won't awaken to a dead in the grave. By then it's too late, we need to be ready to raise up. Welcome to the end. Whoever built the pyramids had knowledge of electrical power, and you know that that's the information that they suppress and devour. Sick the motherfuckers that crashed in the tower Who you sick that made it turn into action in an hour Where are the rights right now? They're wherever, they're wherever you're willing to draw a line And say you cannot come across this line Or I'll kill you That's where your rights are And if you don't understand that folks Then it's beyond my capability to explain it to you They will get away with whatever you let them get away with And until you draw the line And you're willing to die for what you believe in they will keep taking and taking and taking and taking until there is no more to take. It's all gone, and you're a slave. They know how to how to write the script real time based on how we're responding uh, in the awakening, how we're responding to the information we're receiving in our brains. Do they not? Oh yeah, just like you know how how lawyers work in a courtroom, and this is something my lawyer taught me. He said if if the law is on your side, you talk about the law. If the evidence is on your side, you talk about the evidence. If neither one of those things are on your side, you talk about just something else, anything else. Right. And you see that practice over and over again. It's all sorts of distractions away from the evidence and what is known. And and it's replaced with words like or, or phrases like, oh, guess we'll never know what really happened or nobody knows what happened. Mm -hmm. And if people start repeating that, they start believing it. Right. But wait a minute. You know, we, we know what we know that we know. Why should we forget that? And that's what happens. That's right. That's right. Now, I want to talk about the evidence. The evidence is very, very, very important. And for the listeners, okay, and for the purposes of documenting this process by which I have gone through, okay, I'm going to convey this to you. The evidence is so important. The presentations that Dr. Judy Wood has been doing for years, okay, even through her 500-plus page textbook, presenting the evidence, how to look at the evidence, and how to not be distracted by it. And Dr. Judy has also learned that the people that have been trying to suppress this evidence have been claiming to be scholars, have been claiming to be experts. That's also a diversionary tactic, and that is to credentialize uh, themselves, make them seem like experts so that you'll look away. But let me read something to you here, okay? This is as a result of the work that she's doing right now. Uh, Dr. Judy was on the Hagman and Hagman program, and I'm going to read something to you here on Homeland Security U.S., all right? And this was published 26th of February. Investigators understand the value of evidence that exists at any crime scene. It has been written that if you listen to the evidence carefully enough, it will speak to you and tell you exactly what happened. If you don't know what happened, keep listening to the evidence until you do. The evidence always tells the truth. The key is not to allow yourself to be distracted away from seeing what the evidence is telling you. And Dr. Judy, please allow me to just continue reading here because this is Doug Hagman. He's a, what, 40-plus year uh, investigator. And he was floored by recent discoveries in your textbook. Those instructions were constantly drilled into me during my 30 years as a career investigator and Joe, my son and co-host for nearly 10 years. Forget conspiracy theories, wild speculation, and even your own biases and look at the evidence for the evidence always tells the truth. The key is not to allow yourself to be distracted away from seeing what the evidence is t telling you. Now, we have, I believe, uh, very convincingly demonstrated without trying to manipulate the minds of Joe and uh, and Doug Hagman. We've clearly shown them as investigators to take a look at that evidence and to not listen to anything that they had learned uh, since that fateful day on 9-11. And they have just recently been exposed to the evidence that's contained in your book. Here's my message, and you can comment on this, Dr. Judy. Do you, Every do you remember what he said at the beginning? Uh, he said, it's, it's not just a preponderance of the evidence. This is beyond Be all reasonable doubt. I, I was just going to say this. That there is no question. It, this is indisputable evidence, ladies and gentlemen. And this is a, a, a big part of what I'm, I'm going to convey here in this segment here. Dr. Judy Wood saw the evidence right from day one. And I'm going to have her describe what she saw right from day one. She's put it together, and she's tried to tell everyone to look at the evidence. Look at it. 
and don't be distracted by all the psyopers. But ladies and gentlemen, that's the first step in your process is to understand that you're going to be diverted away from the information contained in the textbook. First, you need to know what the evidence is. We talk about psyoping because you need to know how you're going to be diverted away from it. Okay? But you need to know this most importantly is that this evidence that's in this book is indisputable. It has never been disputed. So you have to look at it and make sure that as you make up your own mind when you see it for yourself, the evidence will tell you what the true story is. You need to know what your environment is, the psyopers and the psyjackers, and we'll get more into that. But Dr. Judy, when did you discover something was wrong? As I was watching the TV set in the faculty conference room, to me that looked like a, well, actually I learned earlier on. Was on 9-11, like when you saw the towers crashing, right? Uh, would you even like start with the radio program or yeah. the... Uh, Please, right from the very first moment that you discovered something was wrong. Um. Well, I, I taught a three-hour graduate class on Tuesday evening, so I got up a little bit late. And just to make sure I'm up by a certain time, I have a clock radio that would kick on with a really obnoxious talk radio station. It would be so obnoxious it would get me up. And I was up before that, and I was in another room entering grades from a test and a spreadsheet, and the radio kicked on. I didn't feel like going in there to shut it off. And then these, these guys were talking about, well, the guy at the party last night made a wrong turn with his airplane and ran into the building. <laughs> and the other, then a little bit later, you know, I'm kind of half tuning it out like they're telling a joke. A little bit later, they say, oh, there's another one from that party who made a wrong turn with the air, airplane and ran into the building. And this is getting too weird. They don't, you know, they're not to the punchline yet. So I went and turned the TV on, and then I'm seeing something else. And um, I have rabbit ears, so I, well, back then, and I would switched around to all the different channels, and they're all playing the same tune, the same image from the same angle. And that was just weird to me because usually you have, you know, up close and personal, a reporter with a camera in somebody's face, what did you see? What did you think? But it was all the same thing, and that it bothered me. And then there's the incident at the Pentagon. Mm-hmm. And my parents live near the Pentagon, so, you know, I need more data. This, this looked like somebody was playing a psyops on, on the public, kind of like War of the Worlds. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I called my mom to ask her what she saw, because, you know, if it was, we were being attacked, she could, she would obviously see fighter jets overhead, right? Mm -hmm. Called her up. She looked at, she didn't know anything was going on. Looked out, no, no fighter jets. So got her uh, skeptical. And it really made a difference how you entered this, whether you're skeptical or not. And that stayed with her. Uh, I then went into campus and the first two faculty I ran into said, we got to go take them out. we got to take them all out. And so they had, you know, their pitchfork in hand ready for lynching. Oh, yeah. They're already us. geared up for that. Including me. I mean, I, I have to admit, I was one of those uh, that actually submitted an application to become an air marshal right away. And then I went into the faculty conference room and where they're playing the TV set in this big screen television. And I'm looking, snickering, almost snickering, pointing at the TV set. I didn't say anything, but it was as though I said, come on, you guys aren't buying this, are you? You know, it, it looked kind of silly. I mean, it looked like what happens when you pull a piece of yarn from your sweater and it all comes undone. Yeah. Uh, you know, back in the, you know, you know, when we were learning how to knit, they That's didn't right. have the interlocking. And if the, the other faculty look at me, and these are, full professors in the Department of Mechanical Engineering. They looked at me like I was nuts. And what, you know, am I on a foreign planet? Am I insane or is the rest of the world insane? And that's a very uncomfortable feeling. And most people tend to fall in with the majority with that discomfort. It's known as peer pressure. Right. But I still needed to logically reason it out, like what is the difference between what they're seeing and what I'm seeing? Mm -hmm. So I went up to my office and did some calculations uh, you know, with the the demise time, I thought it was a collapse at the time, or was pretending it was a collapse, just to see if I could test that. And that's where I first imagined the billiard ball uh, example, because it's just taking it and simplifying it, mm -hmm. and it really helps you understand things. And I thought, well, I must have the co uh, have memorized the coefficient of gravity wrong. And I'm still being, you know, open-minded. How I'm soon after 9/11? I'm sorry to interrupt you. How soon after 9/11? How soon after the demise of the towers were you doing that? Oh, it was while they were still playing it over and over again on the TV set. I, you know, I felt so weird in the conference room. I went up to my office. Wow. And uh, this was actually before the um, we got news of the the uh, Flight 93 thing. But uh, right, you know, it was about that time. 
but anyway, I was I was going through this calculation. I thought, okay, I've memorized the coefficient of gravity wrong. And, and then I look up my physics book off the shelf. Well, that's the same number. Well, maybe that was a typo, and I memorized that. That's why I have memorized wrong. So I, I actually went through four physics books to find that coefficient of gravity. I, it's like I was just desperate to find an explanation for why I saw something that nobody else saw. I didn't give in and just decide I saw what I was told to see. That's that's the uh, weird part about me. Uh, you know, I, I needed to understand what was the discrepancy. And actually, I wrote down a very simple equation of motion and took it to another faculty member two doors down. I didn't tell him what it was for. I showed it to him, and he acted like I was having a senior moment because it was so simple. Like, of course, that, that that's correct. And I, I still was like, what's going on here? Mm-hmm. And uh, I went to class. They... It was it was smart. They allowed classes to continue because they figure people have to talk about it anyway, so they may as well, you know, go to class and talk about it. And I was telling my students, isn't it amazing how they built this building to to just go away? Just mm. go straight down or just go away. Isn't that amazing? And and they they were all into, you know, terrorists and bin Laden and Al Qaeda and I couldn't get them interested in the structure that was just bizarre mm. behavior. Hmm. And after a few days, you learn not to talk about it because uh, if you're not on board with, you know, grabbing your pitchfork and going after the witch, you know, witch hunts, then uh, if, if people would just have this tunnel vision. I've heard you tell yeah. this story. I've heard you tell this story many times, but I didn't realize it was that soon after while it was going on in the break room. I thought it was later on in the day that you were sitting down doing your calculations. Um, <laughs> remarkable. Yeah. Can, can I can I share something with you here? I want to play this again. I know you've heard it earlier on in the week, okay, because this is important to, to, to display this, especially to our new listeners. The, the media, ladies and gentlemen, is so scripted. I'm going to prove it to you right here. There is no, you listen to this, and you tell me whether or not somebody is typing information to create a perception in your mind. Now, what the message is and what they're trying to create, you don't even know that. They just want to influence your brain in the following manner. Listen to this. Hold on a second. You know, we've made a little bit of news this week. I don't know if you've heard about this, but I'll tell you why. It's because on our uh, last New York show, which is tomorrow night, we're going to perform a wedding right here on this stage. Ah, uh, I'm sorry about that. Guess what I did? I messed up. Here it is. It actually queued up the wrong one here. Because I don't value that particular clip all that much because, um, you know, we don't know why the guy was saying it. Maybe he just has a big ego and likes to pretend he's in control of everything and spouts out whatever rationalization with confidence at, at spur of the moment. Yeah, I'm sorry. Than a script. Uh, that that, uh, that one, uh, unfortunately, wasn't uh, ready to be queued up. But here's my point, is that they showed over and over and over again that the, the media is reading from their teleprompters. Who's writing on those teleprompters is most important because... It's actually happening oh, that across, one, that the, one. across the country. Across the, right, yeah, they're that, all drinking out of the same watering hole. They're all drinking out of the same exact watering hole. That's right. And, and it was very, very frightening, if I can find it before the end of the segment. Right, that, but, that is what I noticed right off the first thing. You know, when I turned on my TV and I started switching the different channels, they're all playing the same thing. Not, you know, talking to some family member who just dropped their loved one off at an airport or, you know, a, a structural engineer someplace or... Uh, building inspector someplace else or a steel worker. It was all the same view and the same script. Same exact thing. That's exactly right. Uh, now, that was on 9-11. Immediately yep. they came out. Okay. Now, now we also know, looking back at it, you didn't realize, uh, I, I don't think you realized that it was, it was this organized and this coordinated, but you said something is very, very wrong here. They're telling people one thing. But you also, uh, there's, a, there's a photo of like five minutes before 9 a.m., which was before the South Tower got its hole, mm-hmm. whereas the ticker across the bottom of the screen, you know, showing the North Tower fuming away, the, the, the ticker says something about bin Laden and Al-Qaeda. Right away. Right before the second tower got its hole. Wow. And I'm sure somebody found uh, passports out on the curb uh, within minutes after that that uh, that ticker I'm, I'm, I'm as i as i like to joke and say well did, did the driver of the airplane spool the window down and check that out before he yeah. hit the building yeah because yeah. 